here from Whitefish, Montana, and it's daylight savings time. So we're starting an hour earlier, and uh, boy, that was rough. That was rough to set the alarm and get up a little earlier than I usually do so we could get ready for this. It's also um, exactly one hour and six minutes past the time that the moon went completely full. So if you're feeling a little groggy and a little out of sorts this morning, just know that the moon went full this morning on the southern hemis uh, hemisphere and we are in the midst of it, all of that full moon energy. And if you're following astrology, we're also in that Jupiter is getting ready to go retrograde for the next four months. So it means that it's going to drag all of our relationship stuff that we're not dealing with up. <laughs> what a great time to talk about parenting. And for those of you who've worked with me before in the past, I am a coach and I love to focus on those of us who parent because when we're parenting, we're taking care of ourselves, we're taking care of our partner, we're running our business or our job or doing whatever else we do for ourselves. And then we also have these children that need attention from us. And it's really interesting to watch how we decide to juggle that and whether it works or doesn't work. And you know, parenting's always a challenge. So it's not a direct focus on parenting, but it is definitely what happens when we're responsible for someone else. So this topic has been driving me lately. Um, I work for therapeutic programs and a lot of the parents are in that Generation X uh, with uh, older and younger millennials. So I thought that we would focus today on Generation Xers and what they're like as parents. So the historian in me, of course, is going to start with sort of, let's get a perspective of what Generation X is. So according to the... Um, you know, Wikipedia, doing my online research. Technically, they say that it starts in 1965. Those of us born, or those born between 1965 and 1979, some are saying early 60s to late 70s. Um, they're sandwiched between two absolutely huge generations. We've got baby boomers and the largest population of um, children born in our country or in the world actually at this time ever and the second is the Millennials which are also at a very huge very big so it's, it's a short 16 year cycle 16 year generation um, and it's often overlooked so I wanted to spend a little time sort of ruffling out what does it mean to be a generation Xer right now so at the time in the country when the Generation Xers were born, early 60s to late 70s, it was the first time birth control was readily available. So we have the lowest birth rate. So it's the smallest population. Um, it's also the population where divorce rates started to climb and marriages were not lasting and um, children of divorce started to, to become a very predominant thing in the school districts and the school systems. Um, women went to work. It was the first time with Title IX, with athletics, with college education, with everything, where women went back to work. And we have the largest population of women contributing to the workforce ever before, uh, historically before that, um, women usually stayed home or co-worked on a family farm or whatnot, but definitely not leaving the house, um, putting their children in childcare, or even saying, hey, you're old enough now, when you get home from school, let yourself in and I'll be home around five or six. So what we have is we have um, parents, uh, late stage baby boomers who are starting to have some freedoms. They're starting to recognize I don't have to stay in a marriage that doesn't work. I wanna, I wanna make my own income, I have skills, and I'm ready to get out there. And the generation of children born during that time are technically neglected, parentally neglected, um, and even educationally neglected. It's kind of an interesting way of seeing it. Um, let's see, they were latchkey kids. Latchkey is the term, latchkey MTV, the John Hughes kids. There's all sorts of stories and, and nicknames that they use for this. Um, they, grew out without, they grew up without a parental presence. Parents were distracted, they were remarrying, they were having sex, they were doing their jobs, they were putting their heads down and kids were like, they're gonna be fine, they're gonna be fine, and they were neglected. 
Um, this is also the time when it was like the fast food nation. It's uh, here, here's stove for say. At least it's a home cooked meal. It's frozen, but I'm gonna heat it up and we're gonna eat. I'm gonna bring home a pizza. You're gonna eat Chef Boyardee out of a can or chili or whatever. And it was the time when, you know, table time and meal wasn't really happening as much. And there wasn't that connection and that, um, that family value system that was started by the baby boomers. So they were kind of scattered all over the place. I love that it's John Hughes because that's Breakfast Club. That's 16 Candles. That's everything that tells you that these kids, and have you ever noticed there's never any parents in any of these movies? It just makes sense to me that it's like the complete absence of parents. Um, this was also the first generation to um, implement all of the integration rules that, that started after the civil rights issues. And so what we have is we have changes in the schools, we have um, the Cold War going on, we even have 9-11. So these things are just catastrophic. So when we're focusing on the Generation Xers, I'm going to go to Psychology 101 and read the best statement I found online over this last weekend. If you want to know what's unhealed in your life, have children. <laughs> have children. As you are raising your children, you will begin to adapt and adjust what you felt you were missing, what you felt was lacking, what is unhealed in you, and you will pass it on to your children. So. Generation Xers were the last generation with low tech. They were the ones who had bicycles and maybe TVs that worked. Um, I don't even think VHSs were that much into the process. Um, parking a kid in front of a TV was sort of starting to happen, but not a lot. Kids were still outside playing outdoors, walking home from school, playing in the playgrounds, and um, basically left on their own. They were forced to be independent. These, this generation is resourceful and adaptive and they, and they know how to get into collaborative um, problem solving teams with people and go like, well, what do we do? We got all afternoon without mom, without dad. There's drug use, there's experimentation, there's just everything because they were unsupervised. Um, basically, it, one of the things that I came up with was that the Generation Xers have a lot of adolescent memories and not a lot of adolescent sort of locked in behaviors. But they're also sort of the hardest working entrepreneurial generation because what they wanted to do was they wanted to create things on their own terms. So it's like, you know, hey, I watched my mom work, you know, 50 hours a week and she was never home. So now if I'm going to do that, I'm going to work on my own and I'm going to create my own hours. So they're entrepreneurial. They create what they want and they're very successful. And they are, you know, we can also attribute all of the high tech um, contributions to them. So there's access, there's an intent to work, an intent for life, work balance, and there's this independence that was uh, generated from having parents who didn't know what was going on with the kid and schools that didn't know what was going on at home. And so they were just sort of like the middle child syndrome, sort of overlooked. There was a lot of attention before and after, but this generation sort of missed out. They had kids late. You know, they sort of said, let's see what we're going to do with money. I need a job. I need my career in place. I need to have some money in the bank before I do kids because I don't want to have to um, be locked into a 50 hour a week job in order to even pay my bills. They focused on everything with their kids. It's like, it's like that com com compensatory parent which is if I didn't have any attention on me, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass it down and I'm gonna pay more attention than I've ever, ever given, or had um, given to, my, to me, if that makes sense. You know, for me, I, raised in the baby boomer generation, what I noticed was that there was a lot of family values and worth, work ethics and, you know, the perfect family, but no one talked about their feelings. So, you know, when I started to have my kids, we talked about feelings all the time. What I'm noticing with the Generation Xers is that because they were overlooked as a, a generation in, in their childhood, their primary focus now is their kids. So we have terms like the helicopter parent, you know, the parent who's going to get in there and solve problems for their kids. And they do that because no one was there for them. I think that's interesting. 
they rarely have their kids out of sight. They were the ones who had backpacks and, you know, the, the joggers and everything was, um, I'm here with my kid and my kid and I are doing this because they don't want their children ever to feel alone. They also treat their kids like friends. They weren't given a lot of parental guidance as to, here's the boundary between what a mom does and what a child does. And so moms and dads spend a lot of time befriending their kids, trying to be cool, trying to hang out with the MTV generation and, and you know, or, you know, playing videos, playing games, buying their kids anything that they need because they're, con they're again, in that compensatory place of mind. You know, I'm going to give you what I didn't have. It's really interesting. Um, they are also hysterically, hysterically fearful of being out of control. And that makes sense to me because for so long, so many things in their life were not in their control. So now they have this control issue. And what I'm seeing is that with control also comes an abundance of anxiety. It's like, what do I do if it doesn't work? So as a culture, you know, this age group, and I think um, I wrote it down, it's like 30, oh shoot, do I gotta do my math now, <laughs> 47 to 35, somewhere in there is what we're talking about as far as this age group. And, and you know, they just, they, their control issues are huge. And it doesn't help that we have all of these television shows that have been sort of um, increasing over the last 10 to 15 years of kidnapping, you know, CSI, what happens, how, how killers destroy bodies with children and abduct them and do terrible things to them. And so what we do is we want to be hyper vigilant and watch our children and then be in control of everything that they do and help them out as much as humanly possible because no one helped them. They love their kids too hard is the term that came up and that makes sense to me. So I went through a couple of education sites and realized that there's been quite a bit written um, about from the teacher's perspective of if we have a compensatory parent, if we have a parent that's operating in fear, if we have a parent that's struggling to connect and hold boundaries, you know, this brings an entire new um, development into the school systems. We also have parents who are technologically savvy. They can research and provide anything. They can do PowerPoints. They can, they can fundraise. They can make things happen. And they can scrutinize. So they're looking at curriculum and they're looking at grades and they're looking at teachers' um, histories and they're starting to ask questions with those little entrepreneurial minds of theirs. And they can be quite involved in their children's lives, in coaching, in schools, in everything. So I found a site on um, edutopia.org, um, an article written by Susan Gregory Thomas. And she said, with Generation X parents, the most important thing that you can do is give them direct eye contact and listen to them. They want to be seen. They want to be heard. They want to know that they matter and that they're triggered in their childhood a lot. So how do we listen to them, make them feel like they're a really good parent, that they're involved, that, they, that, that they're not neglecting their child, but they need to sort of slow down and back off a little bit. But most important, these are loyal parents. They want, so listen to them, ask them questions. They're going to want to learn. Number two, include them. Give them assignments. They want, you know, they're already doing all of their kids' work, so, so get in and give them assignments on their own. Give them introspection, stories to share, things that they can do, um, even if it's parent-child involvement work. Give them work to do. Involve them. Um, give them projects. They know how to do this. I, I know that part of the most amazing thing when I was raising children um, in Bend was how many parent volunteers were available and what they could do and what magical things they could do when they put their heads to it, whether it was fundraising or making a, uh, building a new playing field at the school or whatever. And then give them limits. They need boundaries. They need um, clear communication. They need to know, you know, I, I see you, I respect you, I'm really glad you're here, and here's the boundaries of when you can be in class and when you can't, or when you're overstepping or when you're understepping. And so what we are really looking at today as parents who are Generation Xers is that they're operating from a form 
of increased independence and neglect, and they're also hyper vigilant on their children, which is what we're seeing in a lot of the critiques coming in from the millennials. So I hope this information is interesting. To me, it brought out a lot of, a lot of compassion that this latchkey kid is creating a world from scratch without a lot of information, and they're doing the best job that they can, and they're taking some hits, and they're also some of the most the smartest, most entrepreneurial, most successful generation we've had in a long time, even for that small little bit. So if you're a Gen Xer, if you're struggling with understanding how you are as a parent, or if you just want support as a coach, um, from a coach, give me a call. My name is Denise Dryden. You can find me on denisedrydencoaching.com. And uh, have a great Sunday. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.